Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Ghost Layers Report. I'm always Ryan, right here in Tokyo, Japan. It appears that another government official has given in to the pressure from the central government here in Tokyo related to the ongoing battle over the restart of the OI reactors. Fukui Governor Isashi Nishikawa has given in to government pressure over the restart of the actors. Now, if you remember, this is the same gentleman who resisted his own local assembly when they recently gave in to pressure from the corporate powers and to the Tokyo central government over this issue. But finally, he is broken in the same manner that Osaka governor Hashimoto gave in a Tokyo pressure. Now, let's look at this in a little detail. According to the report, Mr. Nishikawa is expected today, um, Tuesday, Tokyo time, to endorse the restart of the two reactors at the Kansai Electric Power Company, also known as KEPCO, not to be confused with TEPCO, those are two separate companies, over the OI uh, uh, nuclear power plant. Uh, after the local Nuclear Safety Commission officially informed him on Monday that steps have been taken to ensure safety at the nuclear plant. Now, Hideki Yuki uh, Nakigawa, he is the head of the commission set up by the prefectural government, uh, has presented Nishikawa with the report compiled by the panel of the local nuclear safety commission um, that, examined, that examined reactor 3 and 4 at the KEPCO nuclear power plant in the town of Oi. Now, they have released a statement saying that the um, reactors have been su sufficiently secured um, in their report. Okay, now, let's just stop for a moment. Now, if we remember back, um, not too long ago, there was a revamped national nuclear safety uh, standards, which is uh, hastily approved by METI uh, Minister Yukio Idano and the current Prime Minister of Japan, Noda. It was hastily approved, and one of the big issues of that was um, uh, vents, air vents and pressure vents that are key to preventing a explosion at a, any nuclear power plant. That was uh, something that was key, which was not part of the OI reactor. And another key uh, element of this was with these uh, revised, hastily revised, nuclear safety standards was that the central, central control center of the nuclear plant must be above uh, ground level. Now, as we all know, the OI plant, neither of these things are currently in place. So when they say sufficiently secured, this is askewed. This is coming from uh, NODA, who made a statement at the time of the release revised uh, safety plan, who said that the OI reactor is more or less so, um, up to safety standards, which um, that was at, at the time KEPCO had promised. And we do put that in quotations here, promised that as soon as the reactor is restarted, within, I believe it is, um, two to five years, they will have all of the uh, new safety standards in place. So at this time, when they say sufficiently secured, well, you really have no choice here but to um, see that this is really not true. It appears that the uh, local commission is agreeing with um, Yukio Idano and Prime Minister Noda 
that OI is in line with the current, with the old safety standards, and the plant has the ability to be up to these new hastily revised safety standards within a few years. So this whole statement is sufficiently secured is misleading, really misleading. But um, the OI mayor, uh, Shinobu uh, Tokioka, probably butchered his last name there, please excuse me, he's also expected to endorse the restart of the reactors during the town assembly's regular meeting, which is happening today. Uh, while the prefecture assembly is likely to tell Nishikawa it approves the restart. So it appears that everyone here is getting their ducks in a line and they are giving in to the central Tokyo government's demands. Now this has followed several months of high pressure of um, the Tokyo central government sending representatives down to Oi, uh, putting a hardcore pressure on them to say give in, give in, we need it, we need it. We all know those numbers they presented uh, that was said in the Kinki uh, region, or more commonly known as the Kansai region, of uh, how they would have a def deficiency in uh, power supply as compared to power demand. Now this is interesting because uh, last summer there were almost no, react new, no nuclear reactors up and running. And we didn't have any rolling blackouts. We didn't have any power consumption problems. Um, the only time we did our rolling blackouts was the weeks following the nuclear disaster. Uh, that was due to simply put, Japan has never dealt with a problem like that and really didn't know what to do. Now I myself experienced the rolling blackouts here in Tokyo. I saw all that. It was pretty hard to deal with. But we were able to deal with it. I clearly saw that. Uh, the businesses here were very creative in how to keep food fresh, keep food safe, uh, keep operations going, when we did have limited power supply. And then the summer came, and we had no rolling blackouts, no problems whatsoever, because we were able to import other types of base energy sources to make up the difference. Now, it would be easy enough to maintain that for the next few years until we start the uh, roadmap to having a base energy source that is not based on nuclear. So this whole issue here, it's very clear that um, we're losing several political battles here. So this push to get rid of nuclear power in Japan needs a victory, needs something, because it's very clear that the politicians are falling down uh, like dominoes. You know, and please excuse me, but to even continue with this, I'm going to do something I haven't done on camera in a while. I'm going to smoke. I hope you don't mind. Because, you know, Covering this and watching this and being directly in this country involved in it, day in, day out, as I am, it does wear you down a little bit. When you consistently see uh, the leaders having a fight back and forth, and you see the ones who oppose it, and you see the ones who are for it, and you see the ones who oppose it for months and months and months, fight it resist it. And then suddenly here in the past two weeks we're seeing a lot of major opposition here in Japan fall. Like I said, fall like dominoes. And we have to wonder why. What's going on here? Well, what we could theorize here is going on is money. Now the OI local government has received 
a lot of money over the years from not only the nuclear power industry but also from the central government in, in, in Japan here in Tokyo to support this type of thing now it's legal to do that but we can assume it's bribe money it's buying him off so what I can see happening here is that the nuclear industry has come in there finally and the central government here in Tokyo has come in there finally and said hey we have given you all this money over the years and um, that was not free money that was not a thank you gift we gave you that money so you would do what we want especially when the public starts to go against us so we want to return on our investment that's probably what's going on here and also we have the um, the practice of um, bureaucrats and politicians once they retire they're given lucrative jobs in these type of industries the most powerful industry in your area gives you a lucrative job once you leave public office so they're probably putting pressure on that too you know saying that hey if you don't give what we want you don't give us what we want when you retire there's no nice job for you waiting in the private sector. So it's more than likely that type of pressure is going on. They want to return on the money they've been given all these years. And they're saying, hey, we're going to ruin your life once you leave private once you leave public office by get offering you blackballing you. Excuse me, blackballing you when you go into the private sector looking for a job. So more than likely that type of pressure is going on. So here's what we have. Now the Fukui governor has given in and the mayor of Oi is prepared to give in. Alright, so have that what you will, you know. So we're gonna need some type of victory soon. So look it's look like it's gonna come down to Hashimoto with his upcoming battle with um Ketko at the annual shareholders meeting because this city government does hold the, the largest shareholder amount at 9.4 percent I believe 9.4 9.3 9.4 something around that so he's expected to go in there and have this battle and that was going to be the biggest chance here he's going to push those proposals through uh, that the city government has 10 of those proposals up right now and all of them allude to getting rid of nuclear power so that's the big next political battle we're going to have to wait for and see if he's able to pull it off or not. Alright, so again, I want to thank you very much for watching this channel and watching this video. If you haven't done already, please subscribe. Please share the video with others. And please leave a comment in the comment box below. Be part of the discussion. Share information with me. And also, if you feel inclined, please make a video response. So until next time, this is me, Always Ryan, here from Tokyo, Japan. Checking out.